Good morning. I am the Reverend Guy Sebastian Johnson, interim pastor of the North Congregational United Church of Christ. Listen, we're glad that you were able to tune in and worship with us this morning, for we are a place just for you and a just place for you. So we ask you just to come on in, enjoy yourself, enjoy our worship. And now, let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. join us in the call to worship. Hear the commandments of God to God's people. I am your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. God have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. God have mercy. You shall not invoke with malice the name of your God. Amen. God have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. God have mercy. Honor your parents. Amen. God have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. God have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. God have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. God have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. God have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. God have mercy.
everyone. I am coming to you today from Robert Frost Elementary. It's right across the street from our neighbors to the north in Westerville, the Westerville UCC. And um, this playground grabbed my attention for two reasons. Number one, it's bright and colorful, just like the illustrations in our book today. But also, um, it was quiet. Um, it's getting a little bit harder to find a nice quiet playground to share my stories because the weather's finally changing and it's warm and people are out and about and expressing who they are. And that's what our book is about today. It reminds us that the key to feeling good is liking ourselves because we are who we are. So I'm gonna share, I'm going to like me, a letting off a little self-esteem by Jamie Lee Curtis and illustrated by Laura Cornell bright colorful illustrations i loved them i loved this book the minute i saw it i'm going to like me when i jump out of bed from my giant big toe to the braids on my head i'm gonna like me when i grin and i see the space in my mouth where two teeth used to be i'm gonna like me wearing flowers and plaid i have my own style I don't follow some fad. I'm going to like me when I climb and I wave as the bus pulls away and I'm feeling so brave. I'm going to like me when I'm called on to stand. I know all my letters like the back of my hand. I'm going to like me when my answer is wrong, 
like thinking my ruler was 10 inches long. I'm gonna like me when I'm sharing my lunch because just like bananas, friends come in a bunch. I'm gonna like me when I jump up so high, I'll twist and I'll stretch straight up to the sky. I'm gonna like me when I fall and get hurt and mess up my elbows in pebbles and dirt. I'm gonna like me when I don't run so fast, then they pick teams and I'm chosen last. I'm gonna like me when I do the right thing and return what I found, even when it's a ring. I'm gonna like me when I'm feeling strong. I'll walk with a smile, arms swinging, legs long. I'm gonna like me when I sit with my mom and make a get well card for my sick friend, Tom. I'm gonna like me when I eat something new, even if grandma makes octopus stew. That's how you make octopus stew. Number one, catch a 150 pound octopus. Number two, clean it well. Three, cook in a large pot on a stove, season well. Stir now and then, and four, serve with rooster foot salad and snail bread. Mmm, sounds delicious. I'm gonna like me when I make a mistake and put out the candles on Dad's birthday cake. I'm gonna like me when I open the box and smile and say thanks even though I got socks. I'm gonna like me when I try a new task, I bring in a plate before I am asked. I'm gonna like me when I clean in a flash and play with my brother and take out the trash. I'm gonna like me when I cuddle up tight and I know as I'm sleeping, I'm safe and all right. I'm gonna like me cause I'm loved and I know it and liking myself is the best way to show it. I'm gonna like me, I already do, but enough about me, how about you? All right, how about you? I wonder what it is. What ways that you like you? I wonder how those ways are different from your friends. I really wonder if you like octopus stew. Well, our song for dancing will be on the Facebook Journeys page, so dance your wiggles out and then draw or write a picture that really tells people what you like about you. Right now, right hand and left hand together. Dear God, thank you for all the ways I am me. Help me to always remember how important it is to be me. And help me create a path that makes me and you proud. Amen. All right, see you next week.
Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. These are the words that are recorded. From Mount Hor, they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom, but the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned! By speaking against the Lord and against you, pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the church at Ephesus, chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. Uh, These are the words Paul sends to the people. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of the flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. And our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel as recorded by John, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. Uh, These are the words that are recorded. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned. But those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people loved darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. Uh, My friends, these are the words of God for us, the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Please join me in a moment of prayer. Almighty God, during this time between pastor and people, wherever they may be in diaspora, God, I ask that you give me a servant for your people that is both receivable and believable. And God, I ask that you comfort the afflicted, but more importantly, afflict the comfortable. Uh, we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. When I was a child, Bible drills were a regularly scheduled activity in our youth ministry. We had to know from memory Bible verses. Uh, the referee would call out a verse that all of us had been given to recall at a moment's notice. The referee might call out a scriptural reference, and the person in the hot seat had to recite the verse in its entirety in the language that Jesus spoke, the King James. Uh, these were all scriptures that we all should have had imprinted in our collective memories. I had about 50 to 60 in my memory bank. Um, th th these verses were verses that people had some passing familiarity with, uh, such as, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Uh, Jesus wept. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Uh, these are verses that we heard and still hear over and over and over again. And they have not only become a part of our subconsciousness, but a part of our society. Uh, for example, John 3.16 shows up everywhere from social justice protests to NFL end zones. Uh, football players have it in the charcoal under their eyes. Uh, sides declaring it show up when teams score. We, as a society, generally know this verse one of the best-known verses in all of Scripture. I, I learned it this way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whomsoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. From the King James Version. <clears throat> And while I knew that verse, uh, one word in particular stood out, whomsoever. If we want to make it current, we could use the word anyone or everyone, all, if you would. To be clear, I've always been fascinated with the word whomsoever or its 21st century cousin, whoever, and here's why. Uh, there are people who would say that some folks are excluded because of one thing or another. Uh, in this country especially, there have been people who have declared that certain people cannot be included in whoever. And that's where I want to focus this morning. But before I can, we need to look at the rest of this morning's readings first. And let me be honest, there's a tenuous link uh, between the gospel reading and the other readings for this morning. And that link is via a serpent that has been lifted up. So let me give y'all a little bit of background. First, in the Numbers reading, Moses is dealing with people on the verge of a mutiny. They are mad. Big mad. Mad enough to complain, that, mad enough to complain against God and Moses. Uh, they're out in the wilderness and they're hangry, hungry and angry. Uh, this is a folk who collectively need a Snickers. Uh, Moses, they say. You brought us out here to die. 
We hungry, we thirsty, and the food that we do have is nasty and we ain't eating it. What you going to do, Moses, huh? What you going to do? Uh, so God hears their complaints and then sends poisonous serpents to kill the people. <laughs> Let's be honest for just a moment. Uh, this is an instance where God's actions are not very loving or kind. Uh, so the people come back to Moses and ask God to stop the serpents from killing them. Uh, God tells Moses to make a serpent, put it on a pole, and everybody who looks at the serpent on the pole will be healed. Uh, they won't die. That's a little questionable for me, but hey, that's the story being lifted up. They didn't heal themselves on their own. God had to do it. Again, that's the story being lifted up. Fast forward to our gospel reading this morning, which has Jesus telling his listeners about this interesting interaction God had with the people and poisonous snakes. Uh, then Jesus drops this nugget, for God so loved the world, and gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have everlasting life. Uh, there are some verses to explain what that means. The son did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved from the day of trial. Just as a point of rest, reference, historically in this country, uh, in its founding documents, certain people were not even considered to be people. Uh, Southern slaveholders insisted that slaves be counted as three-fifths of a person, uh, whoever. Uh, many women today are considered less than full participants in humanity, uh, whoever. Uh, our LGBTQ siblings have been told they're not included because of who they are designed to love uh, whoever, some of you, uh, whether you identify as cisgender or transgender or no gender at all, have been told that you don't count. Uh, whoever, uh, in case you haven't figured it out, whoever means whoever. Uh, now that we have established that, uh, there's a second issue that we need to look at this morning, and it comes from the passage in Ephesians. Uh, you see, Paul writes to the church at Ephesus that a person's whoever status is based on grace and there is not a single thing you can do to earn it. You can't buy it. You can't do it. Uh, look at what Paul says to the people. For by grace you have been saved through faith and this is not of your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the results of works so that no one may boast. Let me put that in God talk. Uh, money can't buy it. Uh, status can't buy it. Your 800 credit score can't buy it. Your forefathers uh, work hard, can do spirit, and pulling them up by their own bootstraps can't achieve it. Uh, it's available to the poor. It's available to the down and out. It's even available to people who don't have boots. It's available to the least of these. It's available to whoever. <laughs> but, 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 God, I hear some of you asking, how do we divide us from them? Uh, there's something I need to tell you this morning. Humans have an innate, innate habit, whether we want to admit it or not, to exclude people who do not look like, think like, act like or cheer like we do. Uh, people love to separate themselves into camps of us and them. We separate, classify, and rank folks based on how much they are like us. My friends, that is the complete opposite of whoever. If you don't believe me, listen to this. Uh, the first declaration I made before signing my covenant call agreement with Just North uh, was that I was a fan of one of them a fan of the team from Tuscaloosa that had, the very night before, captured the national championship. For me, I had nothing against OSU, but they weren't my team. Well, they are now, 
um, at least in the Big Ten. Oh, and by the way, God really loves my team. Um, I will be asking that question again on or about April 1st when baseball season opens. And again, I've got to pick a team and figure out which team it's going to be along Interstate 71 that I'm supposed to cheer for. Just for the record, however, God really loves the Washington Nationals. Moving on, while I am being humorous about this whole us versus them issue, it really is a problem in our society. Many of us really don't like people who are different than we are. Now, I know that's not a problem here at Just North, but in general, outside the walls of 2040, uh, we think that people who are not like us are less loved by God. Uh, we may not verbally say it, but it comes through in our actions, in our words, and in our beliefs. It is exemplified in this quote from December the 18th, 1963, by the late Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. during an appearance at Western Michigan University when talking about segregation. We must face the fact that in America, the church is still the most segregated major institution in America. At 11 o'clock on Sunday morning when we stand and sing that Christ has no east or west, uh, we stand at the most segregated hour in this nation. This is tragic. Nobody of honesty can overlook this. Uh, that was almost 60 years ago, and it still rings true. These beliefs come out whenever churches deal with each other. Again, if you don't believe me, I will make the argument that so many denominations exist because that particular denomination, one, has the true link to God, two, knows what God really wants and has spoken directly to the founder of the denomination, and three, that God loves them the most. What's tacitly implied is that God does not love those who are different. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus explicitly said, whoever. And at the end of the day, that's what this boils down to. We are bombarded with information from certain religious figures who claim that God does not love everyone because of who they personally dislike. Jesus said, whoever. Uh, we hear from pundits who claim that certain portions of our population will not have everlasting life because of their own particular interpretations of Scripture. Jesus said, whoever. We gather around a table to remember an event that visibly demonstrates how much Jesus loves us and whoever is invited to the table. Jesus did not qualify his statement at that time and neither do we. Whoever means whoever. Amen. Today our prayers of the people come from Ruth Ann Farthing, who prays that students especially high school seniors, will complete their coursework to pass this school year. She also prays that students with anxieties will learn healthy coping behaviors. Bobby Moffat writes in to ask us to pray for Jeannie M., who has been readmitted to the Riverside Hospital. Steve Baker asks that we pray for his and Cindy's health, while Diane Farabi asks that we Submit prayers of peace and comfort for David and David's family. You see, David lost his younger brother, Larry, this week. John and Jane Pribble uh, asked for prayers of gratitude for the continued recovery of their nephew, Bill, who has been hospitalized since mid-January with COVID-19. Bill has started ingesting solid food again, and 
can stand and walk a few steps. However, much more healing needs to occur and we will continue to pray for his recovery. Marilyn Orlos writes in to offer prayers of thanksgiving that her brother-in-law Steve has recovered from the severe inflammation in his lungs as well as from sepsis and cellulitis and, thanks be to God, is home from the hospital. According to his physicians, it will be approximately another month before he feels like his normal self again. Shane Gillies asks that we pray for his coworker, Bill H., who is having open heart surgery. Uh, he asks that we pray for a successful procedure and recovery. Uh, Tess Kaylee asks that we pray for her friend Jill and Jill's family. You see, Jill's mom died this past Thursday. Uh, both of Jill's parents were very influential in the lives of so many people in Coshocton. Carolyn was the executive director of the American Red Cross for 20 years, taught swimming lessons to thousands of kids for 30 years, and also started the AIDS Task Force in Coshocton. She will be greatly missed. And finally, I ask you to submit prayers of thanksgiving that my godmother Henrietta had successful surgery this week and is at home. Additionally, prayers of gratitude and thanksgiving for receiving the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we pray for your holy Catholic Church that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you so that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake so that our works may find favor in your sight. To have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. God, we pray that you give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. And now... We boldly pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. Hey.
Good morning. We've been hearing so much about the one year anniversary of the pandemic and how it's affected us all that I can't think of anything much new to say. But I do think that it's important for us here to acknowledge the milestone. We've all adjusted in many ways to meet the challenges that have kept us physically apart and forced us to all live differently. We may have changed as individuals, and we have certainly changed how we worship together, though apart. And when we emerge from what I'll call the dark year of the pandemic, things will look different. What will the ever-changing new normal look like? I venture to say that most of you have not stepped inside the sanctuary since last March. If you would walk in today, you would see that part of the space is transformed with sound and recording, recording equipment and lots of cables. All of this to bring you the worship at home experience. The space looks and feels different. What is not visible are the hours of determination, frustration, and technical challenges, but most important, the we can do it attitude, <clears throat> the creativity and the faith that it would all work and what would come out of the work would be okay and that we would be okay. I am still amazed and exceedingly appreciative of the individuals who said we can and must do this, this new way to worship. And for those who continue to serve as worship leaders, Thank you, and thank you. Are there ways that you have changed during the past year? Are there things that you've let go while holding on more dearly to those things that are treasured even more now? These are questions that I think are interesting to think about. As you go through your week, may you be gentle with yourself and be of good heart. For some announcements for our ongoing Zoom gatherings, I hope you'll join us for virtual Narthex today at noon and every Sunday. We always enjoy seeing your faces while we're waiting to see each other in person. We hope you'll join us. The middle and high school youth will meet again this Sunday, March 14th, from 1 to 2 p.m. to continue their book study this book is anti-racist, 20 lessons on how to wake up, take action, and do the work by Tiffany Jewell. Parents were sent information, including zip, Zoom links and earlier this week, but if you have trouble locating it, please contact Susan Yutzi, and we look forward to seeing everyone. The We Wonder series for our pre-K through grade five will meet on Sunday, March 21st from 1 to 1.30 p.m. with D first, and parents will be sent information and the Zoom link by Wednesday, March 17th. If you have questions, please contact either Susan Yetzi or D first. We look forward to seeing you there. And for all pre-K through grade five, we hope to see you at the outdoor Easter egg hunt on Saturday, April 3rd from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Don't forget to mark it on your calendar. The rain date is April 10th. And Webbs meets this Wednesday, March 17th from 7 to 8.30 p.m. Our last meeting for the book discussion about stamped is March 24th. And I do recommend this book if you haven't read it. Bible study will be with Pastor Guy on Friday from 1030 to noon. Now let's turn to our call to offering. The Stewardship Board continues to offer several options available to support our various ministries. You may send a check to the church, use the donate button on our Just North website, schedule payments, or use Zelle 
through our bank. And a reminder that Sunday is the one great hour of sharing Sunday. As always, please hear our gratitude for continuing your support for our church and our ministries. Now, please join me in our prayer of dedication. For gifts given and received, O oh God, we offer thanks and praise. May we share our abundance with all who have need. May we share our hope in like measure. Amen. Before we share our peace with each other, I hope you'll take a moment to hug yourself and know that others are sharing their hugs with you. So now let's open our hearts to share our peace with each other. Let's start by placing both hands over our hearts and slowly remove them with arms outstretched and hands open to give and receive peace. When I extend my open hands to you, I'm opening my heart to you. I'm saying that I'm vulnerable and I'm not trying to hide. I'm offering my peace to you. As you do this, I hope you'll try visualizing certain people to whom you are sending peace this morning. Visualize their faces as you open your heart and extend peace to them. And then, if you like to think of a special place that brings you peace and calm, spend just a second or two in that place and center yourself. As we share this important tradition of passing peace to each other, remember that although we are not physically together, we are connected in heart and spirit. May peace be with you, my North Church family and friends. Again, we thank you so much for worshiping with us here at Just North this morning. Um, you can find us on social media, on, you, on YouTube, on Facebook. Uh, just look up Just North UCC, and you'll find us on both those platforms. Uh, we are just so happy that you took a few minutes out of your day to spend time with us and worship our God together. And now to the only wise God, our Savior, be all glory and honor, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen. Friends, our celebration is ended, but our service, not just to each other, but to the whole world, to whoever, is just beginning. Let us go forth in the power of the Spirit to love and serve the Lord, but more importantly, to change the world.